So we'll start off here with glaucoma. The definition is uh, gla glaucoma is a condition of increased pressure within the eyeball causing gradual loss of sight due to damage of the optic nerve. Uh, there are two types of glaucoma, open and closed angle, and I will be discussing those uh, as well. Uh, starting off with some facts about glaucoma. Uh, glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness. There are uh, not always symptoms to glaucoma, and that's what makes it kind of tricky because uh, you could be walking around with glaucoma, you are a family member, and only when you have screenings with your optometrist or ophthalmologist would you be able to know if you actually have glaucoma. So that's why uh, annual eye exams and things like that are important. Uh, as of now, there's no cure to glaucoma. We do have treatment options, which I will also be discussing further in the lecture. Um, and half the patients with glaucoma do not have eye, high eye pressure, so that seems kind of confusing as well. But um, the, the actual cause of glaucoma, we don't know all of the causes, and so this is kind of the mystery in, in, the, in the disease that we're learning a lot about um, as the years go on. Uh, a fact about pressure in the eye, eye pressure rises and falls throughout the day. So if you can imagine if you have pressure to go up and down throughout the day, if you come see the eye doctor when the pressures are up here, he may think something different than when you, you come in at the time of the day with the eye pressure down here. So uh, it's kind of a overall <coughs> picture, and with glaucoma and just with you know regular screenings, we can sometimes catch it when it's at the high part, and which flags our attention to take care of it or look into it. So here are some of the risk factors for glaucoma. Uh, number one, having high intraocular pressure, which is something that we talked about, having this high pressure in the eye. Uh, being over age 60, uh, African American or Hispanic ethnicities have a higher uh, uh, risk, it is a risk factor for glaucoma. Having a family history of glaucoma. There are genetic factors to glaucoma, so if you have a uh, mother or a grandmother or a brother or sister who have glaucoma, that's all the more reason to go in and get checked or have a screen uh, done for your eyes. Uh, having other medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, um, heart disease, sickle cell anemia, these are all things that affect your general health. So you can imagine if you have a condition that's damaging the optic nerve, if it's not getting uh, good blood flow from, say, diabetes or uh, high pressure from high blood pressure, these are the type of things that uh, affect your whole body, so they also worsen or can cause glaucoma to be worse as well. Uh, if you're taking corticosteroid drops, steroid drops are used after like, cataract surgery and things like that, and uh, someone who's on these drops for a long period of time can get spikes in eye pressure, which can cause glaucoma as well. So we're going to start off here with the anatomy of the eye. This is a uh, cut through the eye kind of from front to back with the top of the eye being toward the top of the screen and the back of the eye, the optic nerve, and the brain being back down here. Glaucoma and the whole pressure system of the eye, the pressure system of the eye is up here, where you have the cornea, which is this clear covering of the eye, where LASIK is usually done, things like that. You have the iris, and you have the lens, and this is the lens that's removed during cataract surgery, which is right behind the pupil. The pressure in the eye is made right here. It's called the ciliary body. Eye pressure is made here. It works its way and it floats and it kind of goes out through the angle of the eye. So this is the angle right here, which you may hear open angle and closed angle, which we'll discuss. If you have a lot of pressure building up up here in the front portion of the eye, this will push downward onto the jelly part of the eye, which will in turn push onto the optic nerve, which is right here. And this is where all the information, all the nerve information, comes together into a bundle, becomes the optic nerve, and it goes back to the brain to, to become processed. So this whole system kind of works uh, uh, to uh, hydrate the eye and give nutrients, but also if the pressure is too high, then you get uh, a compressive effect on the nerve. Uh, so let's talk about the water system of the eye. This is a close-up of the front portion that we discussed and discussing how you can have open or closed angle. The more common type of glaucoma is this open angle, this, this picture here on the left. Uh, you can see here that, kind of from the description that we talked about, uh, the fluid in the eye is made right here, 
And you can see with the arrows it follows and it works its way toward the angle. And you can see in this diagram here, the angle is, is nice and open. There's a nice big angle between here and here. Now, on the opposite spectrum, if someone who has a closed angle glaucoma, the, you see the iris here, this red structure here is pinching off the drain. So what happens is the lens is moved forward, the water can't get out, and just like your sink, if you put your hand over the drain or a plate goes over the drain, the water pressure is gonna elevate quickly. Now, closed angle can happen suddenly. You may hear this happen to some people where sudden uh, severe eye pain and blurry vision and the pressure spikes are very high. Same thing in like your sink analogy where if you were to put a bunch of things over the, the drain and the, and the water faucet still on, it's going to build up and overflow and cause this, this pressure system. In open angle glaucoma, the, the problem is more downstream. So uh, it's not that the water can't get to the drain, it's that the problem is that the drain is either um, not flowing quick enough or something further downstream that's causing the buildup of the fluid. And just like I kind of showed you in that other picture here, all of the pressure that happens in the front of the eye pushes on the whole, the jelly of the eye, which pushes on the nerve, which causes damage to the optic nerve. And this is important because all this information has to come and make its way back to the back of the brain. But if, they're, if you're pushing on it for a long period of time, it's not gonna, not gonna, it's gonna start to have damage. Think of it like your arm. Sometimes you sleep on your arm and it goes numb. And you go for an hour, no problem, you shake it off, you go back to normal, right? But if you were to sleep on your arm for days and days and days or years, you could imagine it's not gonna quite be the same that it used to be. And that's kind of the same thing with the nerve in the back of the eye, where if it's having pressure on it for a long period of time, it's going to start getting damaged and stop working the way it's supposed to work. So this is why the general screenings uh, for checking eye pressure and checking the nerve um, are important. Here's a picture of the optic nerve. When we look into the back of the eye, it's not the best picture, but I'll try to uh, outline it here for you. What you see is a, a orange circle and a yellow circle, kind of a lighter inner circle. This is a normal optic nerve here on the right-hand side. You can see that, well, you can't really see very well in this picture here, but uh, imagine you have a donut with an outer edge and an inner donut hole. And the space between the donut hole to the outer edge is the donut. That's the nerve tissue. You can see in this picture here on the left that this donut hole is very big. Right? If you have a lot of donut holes, you don't have a lot of donut, which is the nerve tissue. So these are the things that your doctor sees when he looks back in the back of the eyes. If he sees a nerve that looks like this, he starts thinking, hey, there's probably some glaucoma going on. We need to find out what, why it's like that, why there's, the, the nerve looks larger than it should be. So here's, another, here's, a, here's a computer uh, a test that we do called an OCT, which measures that. So, like I said, there was a donut and a donut hole. Let me show you the difference here. Now, in that previous picture, the, the picture on the left was the damaged one. That kind of matches here. You can see in this picture right here, there's a red circle and a black circle, and it's like a donut hole. You can see that this nerve, which is the left, which is the, the person's left nerve, versus the right side here, you can see the donut hole is much bigger on this side. And if we look at the numbers here, the thickness, or I, you could say the thinning of the nerve, the, this is in the green, this is 100, this is 64. So there's definitely a difference in this person's optic nerves where there's thinning on this side, and this side is more normal. So this is one piece of information that we use to detect glaucoma. The second piece of information is, all right, so yeah, we have a thin nerve, but what does that mean for the information that's getting to the brain? Meaning, is there damage? Just having something that's shaped a certain way doesn't mean it doesn't work as well. So here's a test that we do it's called the visual field test. Some of you may have taken where you can, they put you in this half circle and you push a button every time you see a light. Each one of those little light dots makes a map. And this is the map of your, your vision when you look out into the world. So this is... Uh, a visual field done of the right eye. And this is a normal 
normal test here. You can see this spot right here is the blind spot. We all have a normal blind spot. Everything else on the outside looks fairly white, meaning the patient's seeing it. Black means you don't see. Here on the on this diagram, you can see, hey, no, well, there's something going on here on this outside here that's not present in here. There's some darkening or some decrease in your peripheral vision in this eye. So peripheral vision is not something that you use 100% of the day. You use your central vision to, to read, to watch TV, to do all those things. Your peripheral vision kind of works to get your attention, and then you turn your head or move your eyes to, to look at it. So when you lose your peripheral vision, um, it's, it's, you don't notice it as much. And that's what makes glaucoma tricky in that you could be losing peripheral vision more and more and more and not know it until it's too late. So this is where the, like I said, the importance of the eye exams comes into play. So how do we treat glaucoma? So we know that there's no cure for glaucoma, so just like high blood pressure or diabetes, we have different medicines to take care of it. The medicines come in the form of an eye drop. It goes right to the source, right on top of the eye where it needs to work. The drops that we have here, uh, these are the individual drops. There's four different types. Some of them come in combinations. For example, a combination of yellow and orange may make a medicine, or purple and yellow make a medicine that your doctor may give you. Now, these drops work on either the drain, making the drain bigger or helping the flow, or they work on the faucet, where they decrease the, the flow of the, the creation of the water. So they work in different ways, and they work together. And when you have glaucoma, typically your doctor starts you on one medicine, and then if that stops working over the years, they add a second one and a third one. So it's a lifelong medicine that you, they're, they're cumulative. We keep adding on the medicines as well. The procedure we can do is what's called a stent, an eye stent, where this little device here, this is one millimeter in size. I know it's much bigger here on the screen, but it's very, very small. And this little snorkel here is surgically put into the drain to lower the pressure. It's like a little side port so water can get into the drain much quicker. Now, when all of these fail, when the drops fail, or we can't get your pressure controlled, then we need to think about creating a new drain, where we just gotta get the water out of the eye in a, different, a whole different way. And that's this here with a shunt. You can see here there's a little device that's sutured to the outside of the eye, to the white part of the eye, with a little tube that comes right into the front part of the eye. These tubes are very small, you wouldn't see them uh, unless you paid really, really close attention. Your doctor uh, would manage these and, do a tube shunt surgery if your pressure is not controlled. So glaucoma is a, is, a, is a very slow disease, which is in our benefit because technology and research is always evolving. So things that may come down the line, and things that the different researchers are uh, thinking about and working on, one of them is potentially an implant. Now, if we can put a little implant in your eye, that has the medicine in it, and it slowly releases a little bit of medicine at a time, hey, that would be better, because you wouldn't have to forget your drops or not get the medicine. We would know that it's working for you um, and that you're getting all your medicines. Or in a contact lens form, which is something that some, some researchers are thinking about. You can put a contact lens in every day, or the ones that you normally wear, to have medicine in it, hey, then that would save you a step in not needing a, another medicine. Uh, we talked about the micro shunts, which was that little picture, that little snorkel. There's different versions of that that are coming coming out that they're doing research on that say at the time of cataract surgery, where you're going to have surgery anyways, we can put these micro shunts in to lower the pressure. So uh, you wouldn't need a separate surgery. We do it at the time of the surgery that we were already going to do. And like we talked about, glaucoma is genetic. So if we can, we can uh, tackle the problem at the source, meaning your genes and how how your body is designed, we can prevent it from happening in the first place. And lastly, stem cell research is something that's going on in a lot of different fields. Glaucoma is a progressive disease that damages the nerve, right, of the eye. And as you know, nerves don't really regenerate very well. So any damage that's occurred from glaucoma, we can't get back. So if we can regenerate the nerve or use stem cells to regenerate the nerve, then that would be a potential cure for the problem that, that we have. So...